Hello, my name is Thomas Kellermann from Renaissance Electronics Europe. I'm a member of our eFactory team and I'm supporting our Ethernet Phi products. Today, I want to introduce to you our Ethernet Phi ASSP and explain some of its special features. Although Ethernet is a common standardized technology, there are a lot of differences between standard Ethernet used at home or in offices and industry Ethernet. These differences are not related to the technology itself, but to the requirements of the applications. The most evident difference is the environment. Industry Ethernet components could be exposed to high temperature. Also, moisture or dusty environments are possible. In some cases, also strong electromagnetic fields could influence a communication. In addition to these general operating conditions in the industry area, there are some Ethernet specific terms. One of the most important ones is real time support. In an industrial Ethernet, a lot of clients communicate, and this must be done as fast as possible. If you think of your home network or internet connection, you are mainly interested in a high data rate. You want gigabits to be transferred as fast as possible, but you don't care about it if your download starts in microseconds or in seconds. In an industrial network, the applications are completely different. The amount of data is usually much smaller, but it should be sent as fast as possible. If you look at a single Ethernet component or even at the Phi, you need very low latencies for the data transfer. This becomes more and more important if a lot of clients are connected in a line or in a daisy chain. Another important characteristic to guarantee a real-time behavior is a low jitter. This leads us directly to the second very important technical requirement. Industry Ethernet needs to be deterministic. This means, for example, a predictable data arrival time. Lots of industrial clients have to work synchronized to guarantee an optimized interaction. That includes also reliable transmission. While a private or office Ethernet user would not recognize a recent of a damaged frame, this could be impossible in the industrial area. Thus, collisions are not allowed and a frame loss is not acceptable. Another general requirement for components which are used for industrial automation is the availability. The devices should be available for a long time, in contrast to the short life cycles in the consumer market. To meet all these requirements, we developed the Ethernet Phi ASSP, especially for the industrial market. The Ethernet Phi ASSP is available as a one-channel device in an 48-pin LQFP and as a two-channel device in an 80-pin LQFP. The Renesas Phi ASSP offers you high-end performance. This includes, for example, the lowest latency in the market. Furthermore, very long cable connections are possible, up to 170 meter or even more. Reference designs with our Ethernet FIs show also very high EMC immunity compared to other available devices. In addition to these high performance, the Ethernet Phi ASSP includes some special features to fulfill the highest expectations for industrial FIs. These are a bit error counter, a line quality monitoring, and a time domain reflectometry, which I will I explain in detail later. Both Phi devices are also optional available with an integrated precision time protocol logic. Due to clock synchronization and timestamp communication, a high end real time with a resolution of one nanosecond is possible. PTP is standardized in the IEEE 1588. The bit error counter, short BER, counts as the name already implies errors. It detects and counts faulty symbols. The BER counter works for the data transmission and idle pattern. The BER can be configured individually by the user depending on the application. The user can define a BER window. This is the time after that the BER count is reset. The smallest window is 10 microseconds and the largest is unlimited run. The second configurable parameter is the trigger. With this trigger, you define 
maximum error threshold. The BER counter will count errors until the count value reaches this trigger. Then the file reacts. Here it's also your decision if the reaction is just an interrupt or even a direct link down of the file. To demonstrate the BER counter, we will send single frames containing one simple error. This will be done via a SmartBits tester and its application software, which we can see here. The other two windows display the status and the registers of our file. Here we can see the speed indication and the link status. The other window is for register access and will be used to program the BER counter and display its count. This display is updated every second and not real-time. Before we start with our demonstration, the network cable has to be connected that we can see the link up. We can see the link up is established in 100BT and full duplex mode. Now we can program the BER counter. We configure the measurement window to unlimited run. We set the failure threshold to 4. That means 4 errors are still ok, one more will result in a trigger. The link down function is enabled by default. This means a direct link down by the fifth counted error. The BER count will be displayed in the first 7 bits of this register. Now we can start to introduce discrete faulty frames. The software is already configured to send one single frame per mouse click. Every frame contains one simple error. Thus, we can easily count up the errors. We start to introduce one error. The count is displayed correctly in the file register. Introducing two frames in a row, the count is at three. One more, four. With introduction of the next frame, the link has to be put down by the file as we will observe in the status window. Sending the frame and the link is down. The FEQ monitor is a functionality to monitor the cable quality during operation. The incoming signal, which is influenced by line length and quality, is adapted by the DSP. The FEQ coefficient, which is screened by the FEQ monitor, is one coefficient of the DSP which is directly related to the quality of the incoming signal. High amplitude of incoming signal results in a low FEQ value and vice versa. The FEQ value is latched after an established connection. The current value of the FEQ can be read out at any time. Without any change of the cable connection, these values vary in a small range of values. You can define an FEQ delta that defines a range of allowed values. If this range is overshoot, the FEQ monitor reacts. Similar to the BER counter, you can configure the FEQ monitor to generate an interrupt or to put the link down directly. With the FEQ monitor, it's possible to detect single wire breaks very fast. To show you how fast and sensitive the FEQ monitor is, we simulated a single wire break. The blue signal is the incoming data at the receive port of the file. You can easily identify the moment of the single wire break and the resulting change of the signal quality. The violet curve is the link LED output of the file. As one division on the timeline is 500 nanoseconds, you can see that the link down occurs less than 2 microseconds after the single wire break. In contrast to the BER counter and the FEQ monitor, the TDR is not used during operation. It is used for failure detection and analysis of the used cable connections. The TDR localizes a defect and gives you information of its characteristic. For a TDR measurement, a well-defined pulse is sent on the line under test and the reflected wealth will be detected. To configure the TDR for a single measurement, you can configure four parameters. This configuration has to be done in the related TDR registers. 
Generally, you can choose the line to be tested. You have also to program the pulse width of the test pulse. The pulse width value has a resolution of 8 nanoseconds. Thus, pulses from 8 nanoseconds to 248 nanoseconds pulse width are possible. For short cables, you need small pulse widths to guarantee that outgoing pulse and incoming don't overlap. For long cables, you need longer pulses to receive a usable reflection. For the reflection capture, you can define a trigger level and a measurement window. The trigger defines for which voltage the TDR will capture. For the trigger, a small value is usable to detect small reflections, but the trigger should not react on noise. Two or three are usable values for the trigger. The window defines a time while the capture is inactive. In other words, the trigger is armed after this time. For the minimum window value, you have to add the internal delay, which is 11 counts, and the outgoing pulse duration to avoid triggering directly at the outgoing pulse. If a reflected wave is captured correctly by the TDR, the counter stops. The resolution of the counter value is 8 nanoseconds, equal to the pulse width. With the counter value, you can calculate the position of the defect. If you substrate the internal delay from counter value, you get the runtime of the pulse. This count value multiplied with 80 centimeters give you the position of the defect. The polarity gives you information about the characteristic. A short in the cable would lead to a negative reflection, an open connection or a cable break to a positive one. To analyze a large faulty network, it might be necessary to execute different measurements to get a useful result. I want to show you two examples, an open cable at the distance of 2 meters and an open cable at the distance of 100 meters. For a defect at 2 meters, the reflection is very fast. Just the pulse width of 8 nanoseconds is usable Otherwise, the outgoing pulse and its reflection would overlap. If you would use the same pulse duration of 8 nanoseconds to detect a defect at 100 meters, this would lead to no result. The small pulse is nearly absorbed due to the long distance. In this case, a longer pulse is necessary to achieve a good result. This is an example of a measurement with a pulse width of 56 nanoseconds of the outgoing pulse. For developers, we have currently three different boards available. These are a one-channel starter kit, a dual-channel starter kit, and a demo board containing the one-channel PHY. The starter kit with our one-channel Ethernet PHY ASSP provides an RJ45 connector for an Ethernet cable. The optical transceiver is optional and not soldered by default. You can configure the startup settings of the PHY via strap pins which are connected to 8 configuration jumpers. The board has a standard MII interface connector. Via this connector, register access and data transfer is possible. All MII signals are also available at a pin connector directly at the board. Thus, it's also possible to connect just the SMI to access the PHY registers. The PHY is connected to 6 LEDs and 12 pin connectors to display and output GPIOs. The board contains a 3.3 volt regulator and can be supplied with 5 volts via external connection or the MII interface. The starter kit for the two-channel PHY ASSP is quite similar. It provides the same functions and opportunities, simply adapted for two channels. Two RJ45 connectors. The optical transceivers are again optional. And two MII interfaces. The dual PHY has just one SMI interface. The MII interface controlling the SMI can be set via jumper. 
Again, all MRI signals are additionally accessible via pin connector. Strap pin configuration, GPIO LEDs and pins are available too. The power supply options are equal to the one channel starter kit. The third board is our one channel demo board. This board is a little bit different. At the Ethernet side it has also the standard RJ45 connector and the option for an optical transceiver. The MII interface is directly connected on the board to a V850 microcontroller with integrated Mac. The V850 has also many other interfaces like address data bus, USB function, SPI, UART, CAN, PWM and GPIOs. Furthermore, the board comes with the IAR workbench as development environment and an onboard USB debug interface. This allows you to implement your own software programs like industrial Ethernet stacks on the V850. Our purpose is to provide this board in future with a PTP stack. This will give you the opportunity to run the basic functions of the PTP with our Ethernet Phi. The MIA signals are additionally accessible via pin connector similar to the starter kit boards. Strap pin configuration and LEDs are also similar to the starter kits. Thank you for watching this video. If you are interested in one of our Phi devices or in one of our engineering boards, please get in contact with us.